know in life we get really busy sometimes and we have a lot of things to keep track of. If somebody walked up to me and said, hey, Keith, how would you like to keep track of these three things and that's it? I'd say, what's the catch? It would be a lot easier to track just three things than everything else that's in a normal person's life. However, in routing, we can offer that same option to routers. Instead of having to memorize thousands of routes, we can have them memorize just a few routes. And we do that with a concept called summarization. In fact, a default route is the ultimate summary that says, you need to get a packet to anywhere, you send it to me, and I'll take care of it. So in a summarized environment, all we're doing is we're taking the option of instead of a router having to learn hundreds or dozens of routes or thousands of routes and reducing the number of routes they have to keep track of. That's the whole purpose for summarization. So now that we've identified why we would want to summarize routes, let's take a look at the important questions of what routes to summarize and actually how to do it. Let's use this WAN topology as a perfect example. We've got several networks. We've got this network here, the 23.1.2.128 slash 29-bit network. We've got the 136 slash 30 network, the 140 network, the 144 network, and the 148 network. And I've conveniently put them right here. So if we had a new router come online, we could feed that new router all of those specific routes or ta -da, we could summarize it. So let's take an example of R9 and we'll do exactly that. So here's R9, he's been added to the mix. He's got EAGRP running and he's learned a whole bunch of routes from R1. We can verify that by issuing a show IP route, EAGRP, and that'll show us just the EAGRP learned routes that R1 is sharing. Now look at all these. We've got a whole bunch of loopback interfaces. Now these, these 111 is the loopback interface of R1. The 222 is the loopback interface of R2. So we know what those all are. And over here, we have all of our WAN networks. Now it's showing us that we have six of them. One, two, three, four, five, six. And we have one, two, three, four, five. The extra network that's showing up is because of the point-to-point -point protocol being used on the WAN link between R1 and R2. So R1 has created a 32-bit host route for its good buddy R2, and that has been incorporated into EIGRP. So here's all of our WAN routes plus the extra point-to-point -point route as well. If we want to summarize those, it's so simple. We could just go to R1 and say, hey, Mr. R1, instead of telling R9 about all of these networks, just go ahead and tell them about one route that represents these networks. That would be a summary. Now the question is, what is the perfect summary for those? And this is where it gets dicey for many. So, so check this out. We could, on R1, we could tell R1, hey, listen, you tell R9 that you can get to 23 anything. And that summary route would look, in fact, let's just do it. We'll do it and we'll say, we'll take a look at maybe why it wasn't a great idea. So we'll go into configuration mode, interface FA0 slash zero, which is the interface that R1's using to talk to R9, and we'll say IP summary address for EIGIP autonomous system number one, we'll do 23.000, and the mask would be 255.000. Now that, my friends, is a gross over summarization, but it still is a summary. Now if we go back to R9, who a moment ago had all of these routes in the 23 space. Check this out. We'll do a show IP route. Now it's just one, one summary route. So R1 suppressed or didn't send all the detailed routes. Does it work? Absolutely. R9 can ping, let's ping 131. Where my mouse is right here. So we'll ping 23.1.2.131. It works like a great, like a champ because R1 can forward the packet there and R5, because it's also running EIGRP, has a route back to this new network that's between R9 and R1. So that's great. So what's the problem with this? The problem is, what if R9, because he believes that R1 can get to 23 anything, tries to send a packet to 23.99.99.50? Well, that's not a route that R1 has. So with this gross over summarization that we just did, the unfortunate part is we've summarized way, way too much. So let's take it off. <clears throat> we'll do a control A, say no, and now that's removed. Now the question is, what would be the perfect summary? To specify a more accurate summary, 
where you're not advertising, hey, I can reach anything. That would be a default route. Or in this case, where R1 was saying, I can reach 23 anything. It's too broad. So how do we narrow down the scope of the summary? The key is to find out what all these networks that R1 really does know how to reach to reduce them down to a summary that correctly describes those routes. So let's take a look at the networks. Here they are, these five networks. I know we have the, the one additional network for the point-to-point -point link, which is 146, and that's okay too. And take those five networks and say, well, 23 is too, too broad, too general. 23.1 slash 16 is still too general. 23.1.2 slash 24 is still too general. We need to break down this last octet from each of these networks and find out what bits are common in all of them and use those common bits as part of our summary. So here we've broken down 128 as 100000. I break them down in nibbles as well. For me, it's easier to visually see it if I put a little space between the first four bits and the last four bits of a given octet. So these eight bits represent 128, the last octet of this network right here. Here's 136, here's 140, here's 144, and here's 148. So we look at these, what, how many bits going from left to right do they have in common? And the answer is the first three high order bits. So what would that make our summary? Well, that part's simple. We just take the bits that are on and we add them up together and it'd be 128. If we take 128 plus zero plus zero, and then we simply specify a slash 27 to represent how many bits match between all of those addresses. So the summary that correctly describes all of these networks would be 23.1.2.128, which is representing the bits that are on from the three high order bits. And the slash 27 says, I'm matching on the first slash 27 bits out of 32. So our effective range, if our least significant bit is 32, our next subnet would be the 160 subnet. So our range that this summary is covering is 128 all the way through 159. And that would be an accurate summary, a more accurate summary. And check it out. It even includes the dot 146 that's in that range. So let's go ahead and apply exactly that summary to R1. I'll bring up the uh, console there. And we'll simply hit the up arrow key and instead of saying 23000, we'll put in our perfect summary, which is 23.1.2. What did we say? 128 <clears throat> with a 27 bit mask. So that's 24 bits, and three more bits would be 224, and that's it. And I said no. Dang it. Hold on a second. I had a no in front of there. So let's fix that. There we go. So there's our summary address, and we go over to R9 now and do a show IP route for, for just EIGRP. There's our summary. We aren't getting the five detailed routes because the summary is suppressing the detailed routes behind it. Now we've removed five routes from R9, actually six routes from R9. We reduced that down to one, and we still have full reachability. Thanks again for the request, and have a great, great rest of the day.